Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 4.04, .04, Buffers and Titration. Have your notes ready. If I had a solution, and if my solution had a pH of 5, and an acid with pH of 1 was added, what would happen? Alright, so let's break this down. I'm starting out in my beaker with a pH of 5. So is my solution an acid, base, or neutral to start with? It's already acidic. Now, is it a strong acid or a weak acid? Well, 5 is pretty close to 7, and 7 is neutral, so eh, it's a weaker acid. And now I'm going to add something with pH of 1. Well, something that is a pH of 1 would be what? It would be an acid, and would it be strong or weak? It would be a very strong acid. Alright, so I have something that's a little bit acid, and I'm adding a really strong acid to it. What would happen? The pH of the solution was 5, and now it would be more than 5, less than 5, or exactly 5. And the answer would be less than 5, right? It would probably be, depending how much I added, maybe it would be right in the middle, and it would turn the pH into 3. Or if I added a whole bunch of it, my pH might go really close to 1. Human blood is a complex mixture. The liquid portion of blood, called plasma, is a solution that must maintain a slightly basic pH of 7.4 for blood to remain healthy. You may have noticed that blood is slightly slippery, and you probably recall that slipperiness is one of the characteristics of bases. Okay, so if you're thinking, wait a minute, where is she going with this? Well, I talked about how when you add acid to a solution, it's going to change the pH. And so we're going to talk about that in this lesson, and specifically we're going to talk about things where we don't want the pH to change, like in your blood. Your blood needs to stay pretty stable, otherwise, quite frankly, you would die a very painful death. So if we look at bloods, bloods made of red blood cells, approximately 45%. There are also white blood cells and the platelets. The platelets help it clot, and there's other proteins too and that's less than 1%. And then you have the plasma, which actually does look kind of this yellowish color. And you have the plasma in there as well. And so when it's all together, you have slightly basic or slightly alkaline blood with a pH of 7.4. The pH of blood is more likely to become acidic as metabolic processes generate acid. Metabolic processes meaning that your body is doing something like when you work out and you move your muscles. Okay, so when your body is doing what it needs to do to live and to allow you to exercise and allow you to move and think and do everything else you need to do, well that can produce acid. Excess amounts or too much of acid in the blood can result in more acid than the body can handle which can be fatal. Excess amounts of base in the blood can also be fatal. It is essential that plasma contain a buffering system. And it does. Alright, so let's talk about what that means. So how your blood goes about keeping a constant pH is by using a buffer. So this is a vocab word you want to write down. Buffer. Any substance in solution that resists pH change by stabilizing hydrogen ion and concentration. A buffer neutralizes added acid or base. So if you put in more of a base, the buffer neutralizes it. If you put in more of an acid, the buffer neutralizes it. It resists pH change. In other words, it keeps the pH of a solution almost constant. Okay, so that's a big part, so make sure you have that written down. There are many cases in which the pH of a substance needs to be controlled. For example, in your blood. Blood is a complex solution whose pH must be narrowly and accurately controlled. The pH of human blood needs to be between 7.35 and 7.45. Anything higher or lower than that can be dangerous and create harmful complications or even death. Blood is just one example of a substance whose pH needs to be stabilized within a narrow range. And like we talked about here, every time you walk around, your body's creating new substances such as acids, and that's getting into the blood, and your body needs to be able to control it and keep the pH of your blood between these two levels. 
and there's not a lot of margin for error here. I mean, 7.35, 7.45, that's a pretty small window. So the pH of a solution can be stabilized by the addition of a buffer. So again, we have that buffer to keep the pH of the solution almost constant. If a buffered solution had a pH of 5 and an acid with pH of 1 was added, what would happen? The solution's pH would be more than 5, less than 5, or exactly 5. Now, at the very beginning, I said, okay, we just have a regular old solution, no buffer, and we added acid, and our pH was less than 5. Now, we have a solution with a buffer inside of it, starting out at pH of 5, and we're adding some pH of 1 acid, what's going to happen? Well, you could say either less than or exactly. But if you said less than, how would you say that? Would you say a lot less, a little less? I would say barely less than, or still 5. So maybe it went down to 4.99. So maybe it went down a little bit, but it still stays really close to the original. Because that's the job of a buffer. The job of a buffer is to keep the solution's pH constant. It does that by neutralizing the acid that we added. That being said, careful. Neutralizing kind of means it cancels out. It does not mean it changes the overall pH to 7. Okay? New. No. It neutralizes what you add. It kind of like it defeats it, it cancels it out, and it keeps the pH the same or almost the same. Buffers work by. So how they work, when an acid or a base is added to the solution, the buffer will release or absorb H plus ions, which act to keep the pH of a solution constant. Okay, so the buffer is either going to absorb the H plus ions if an acid was added, or it's going to release it if a base was added, and that's what's going to cause it to neutralize what was added and keep the pH constant or the same. There is a buffer that controls the pH of blood. In the human body, the pH of blood is partially controlled by a buffer of carbonic acid, H2CO3, and bicarbonate, HCO3-1. If the blood experiences an increase in acid or base concentration, the equilibrium of this reaction shifts. That is to say, this system, which is more complex than shown here, is a buffer, one that acts to keep the blood pH at about 7.5. Four. So this is a reaction that helps control the pH of blood. So we have the carbonic acid and the bicarbonate with the hydrogen, and they kind of bounce back and forth of having more of one or the other, depending on if you add an acid or a base. You don't need to write this down or know these exact chemicals, just the idea that your blood has a buffer, which helps to keep the pH consistent. What are buffers made of? Buffers are a mixture of an acid and its conjugate base, or a base and its conjugate acid. Conjugate just basically means matching. All right. For example, acetic acid is H2H3O2, when mixed with its conjugate base is C2H3O2. Do you see how these are almost exactly the same, except that this one has a minus one charge? and this one has a hydrogen, okay, so it has a hydrogen, this one has a minus one charge, that's the only difference. That's why we call it an acid and the conjugate or matching base. And when they're together, it acts as a buffer. So the pH can be stabilized by buffers. Here's kind of a general overview again of how a buffer works. So let's say we add an acid to a solution. So we put some HCl into a solution and it gives off the H+. So remember the H in front is a good indication that it's an acid. And then we have this H+, floating around. Well, the buffer grabs and absorbs the extra H+, therefore keeping the pH close to what it was at the beginning. What if I added a base? Then the buffer gives up an H+. Plus. It's like, oh, yeah, base, you have some OH here, right? Because, oh, it's all about the base. And the buffer says, oh, no, 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 
can't have a lot of base around here. Here's some H plus to neutralize it. Calm things down. No more rocking out. Okay, and keep the pH close to the same. So this is a good slide to write down. Um, that would be a good example of a base, sodium hydroxide. Now again, we talked about how there's different ways to categorize acids and bases based on if they're accepting or donating electron pairs or protons. But again, overall, thinking about acids with the H, bases with the OH, will pretty much get you through most of what we need in this course. All right, so pH, we stabilize it by buffers. We keep it close to the same. We can determine pH by titration, which uses indicators and is based on neutralization reactions, which has to do with the lab for this unit. Titration. Titration is a carefully controlled neutralization reaction. Okay, neutralization means you have what two things? You start with an acid and a base, and what do they make? Water and a salt. All right, so titration is a carefully controlled neutralization reaction in which a solution of known concentration is added to another whose concentration is not known. This drop-by-drop -drop procedure helps pinpoint the exact concentration of the unknown solution. An indicator that changes color at a certain pH helps in monitoring the progress of a titration. So our second word there is indicator, something that changes color based on the pH more definitions of titration. Simply a lab procedure used to find the pH of an acid solution by adding a base drop by drop. The acid must have an indicator in it. Or instead of starting with an acid and adding a base, it's a lab procedure used to find the pH of a base solution by adding an acid drop by drop. Again, the base must have an indicator in it. Titration is a process that allows you to determine the pH of an unknown solution. So here you see a simple but effective laboratory titration apparatus. This is a classic titration setup. It consists of a solution whose pH, hence its H plus or hydrogen ion concentration or hydronium H3O plus concentration is known. Below the burette is a flask containing the solution whose pH is unknown. This flask also contains an indicator. An indicator is a substance that changes color at a certain pH. Phenolphthalein is a common indicator that is clear in acids and neutral, but it turns pink in bases. During a titration, the standard solution, the known one, is up here in the burette, and it is slowly added to the unknown solution down here. The acid in one solution will neutralize the base in the other. A color change in solution will indicate that you have just barely exceeded the neutralization point. Because in the lab, we started with an acid down here, and when it flashed pink, what did that tell us? That told us that it was just neutral. And then once we added that one extra drop, it stayed pink, and now the solution is a base. And that's what this graph really shows. It shows that when you start with an acid, so here's our pH of solution. It's down by one, two. So it's an acid, and then it jumps really fast until it's neutral. It's only neutral for a drop or two, and then boom, it's a base. It's that quick of a change. It's crazy fast. And so that's why you have to do titrations drop by drop. The graph shows how the pH of a solution changed. The pH of an unknown solution was low at first. You expected this because it was an acidic HCl solution, or an acid solution, this time specifically hydrochloric acid. As you added base, the pH of the solution gradually increased. So again, this is a graph of the lab we did. You don't have to write this down. Then suddenly the pH rose. Remember, just a drop or two. As you went from 12 milliliters to 20 milliliters of added sodium hydroxide solution, the pH rose all the way from three, so here my pH is about three, all the way, boom, all the way up here to almost 12. And after that, it pretty much stayed at 12. Okay? The sharp rise in pH, this big jump, happened at about 16 milliliters of base had been added. The pH at which the sharp rise occurs is called the equivalence point. You do not need to know that word. This is the point at which the solution in the flask is a neutral solution, the flash of pink. 
Any base that is added will quickly cause the solution to be more basic and the indicator will turn pink to let you know that it did.